love myself more and to allow myself to be loved more by others. Especially Chris Hooker. <laughs> I know it's pathetic. It's definitely pathetic. <laughs> Greetings, guest. Welcome to The Patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking... They're witches. Witches. Well, that's what people say. The Craft and Teen Witches. It is better that you should rush upon this blade and enter the circle with fear in your heart. Imagine being completely ordinary all your life. Your average, maybe a little awkward, but average family life, average or maybe even a little below average social life. It's the life that most young women experience and it's actually not that hard to imagine. We all know this life, we've all lived it, we're probably still living it. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But then you discover this supernatural power that you possess and you have the ability to change your life, your family's life, your friend's life, change your entire world and you squander it all on a man that you really don't even know. I don't want to go out with you again, okay? Please stop begging, it's pathetic. That's what we're going to talk about today as we review the stories of some of our favorite teen witches. We're going to talk about Sarah from The Craft and Louise from Teen Witch and how they both just blew their powers on trying to get some guy to like them. But before we get started, we're almost at 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for all of your support. It's been so exciting to watch this channel grow for the past year. And if you've been watching these videos and haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. Turn on your notifications and share with your friends. Now on to The Craft. The Craft came out in 1996 and is classified as horror, but I think it's actually more supernatural dark drama. Directed by Andrew Fleming, this movie follows the story of a troubled teen girl, Sarah, who's the new girl in school who finds herself clicking up with the other school outcasts who are known as the Bitches of East Twick to actively practice witchcraft. Each one of these girls has their own unique motives for practicing witchcraft and their own struggles for finding themselves on the outskirts of the social landscape of their school's ecosystem. Let's start with the leader, Nancy, played by Feruza Balk. You can make something up. Nancy is the most intense character of the four, but however confident she may appear, she does deep down think of herself as quote unquote white trash. She grew up poor, she's living in a trailer with her mom and witnesses a lot of abuse that her mom takes from her trash stepdad and simply wants to change her circumstances. Then there's Bonnie, played by Nev Campbell, who's extremely self-conscious due to her body being severely disfigured with burn scars that were the result of an accident. And Rochelle, played by Rachel True, gorgeous Rochelle, finds herself as an outcast simply because she's black at a mostly white school and is constantly bullied by Marsha from the Brady Bunch and her racist friends. And lastly, Sarah, played by Robin Tunney, who we're focusing on today, is an outcast exclusively because she's the new girl. So she's accepted by a crew of Wiccans almost immediately after Bonnie notices that she has some supernatural powers of her own. She's a natural witch. And now that their quote-unquote coven is complete with the fourth witch, the young women complete their ritual, make an offering to Mano, and this act makes them all possess the things in which they truly desire. And what do these girls desire? Abani's spell is about obtaining beauty. She wants to be beautiful both inside and out. And this is understandable given her physical condition. The scars aren't just on her body, but her self-esteem is also scarred And what she hopes to gain and does gain from this beauty spell is confidence. I drink of my sisters and I take into myself the power to be beautiful outside as well as in. Rochelle's spell is directed towards her racist bully and she asks very eloquently not to have the same hate in her heart that others have for her. And I ask for the ability to not hate those who hate me. 
which is actually quite beautiful when you think about it. But this spell causes her bully's hair to fall out and essentially humbles Marsha. I mean, I know that's not Marsha. That's not her character's name, but I can only see her as Marsha from the Brady Bunch. I mean, it really doesn't sound like a revenge spell when she cast it, but I guess it was. Hmm. I drink of my sisters and I take into myself all the power of my life. And then Nancy, the most clever one of all, asks for all the power of Minot. She wants it all. Her spell manifests itself with her life changing drastically after her mom's abuser has a heart attack, dies, and then they get his insurance money, boosting her and her mom's financial status. And she also increasingly gains a lot of power throughout the film. And then there's Sarah. What spell does Sarah cast? A love spell on Chris, the school jock, jerk, and resident asshole. She wants him to love her. What a waste of power. So why does she do this? She has a loving dad in her life who's trying his best to raise her alone since her mom died when she was a baby. But it's actually pretty clear why Chris is one of the first guys that she meets at her new school. He asks her out. They go out. He wants to go further. She doesn't. Then the next day, he spreads a rumor telling everyone at school that they had sex and that she was trash in bed. So she moronically wants him to love her. I drink of my sisters and I ask to allow myself to be loved more by others, especially Chris Hooker. I know, it's pathetic. And she wants to love herself more, but this isn't the way to quote unquote love yourself. It's actually quite counterproductive. If Sarah was going to waste a spell on this guy, which we shouldn't be wasting anything on males like this, it should have been a revenge spell. Like, like maybe he got some sort of STD and his <laughs> fell off or something. But no, she really wishes for this man to follow her around like a little puppy dog and swoon for her. I thought nothing of this when I watched this movie when I was a kid, but now all I see is wasted power. Wasted power, wasted power. Why not just find a guy who actually likes you instead of one you have to cast a spell on? And this is far too common of an occurrence in women. We have a lot of power in romantic relationships and we tend to squander it, trying to make something happen or force something with a guy who wants absolutely nothing to do with us. Like Chris wanted nothing to do with Sarah. I don't want to go out with you again, okay? Please stop begging, it's pathetic. And Chris was right. This foreshadowing here was absolutely right. Stop begging, it's pathetic. Her greatest power move would have been not feeding into any of this at all. It blew his head up even more and he savored this reaction that he got from her. And for those of us who aren't witches, our greatest power is walking away and only expelling energy to those who uplift us and expel positive energy onto you. Avoid the negativity. But back to Sarah, her spell, as does all the others, backfires and Chris essentially begins to annoy the heck out of her before trying to force himself on her and she comes to the realization that she'd rather for him to like her for her, not because she cast a spell on him which manipulated his mind and his feelings for her. And this is a similar epiphany that happens to Louise and Teen Witch, which we'll briefly cover now. So Teen Witch is an amazing nostalgic 80s film that made its debut in 1989 and follows a 16-year-old high school student, Louise Miller, played by Robin Lively, and her journey of discovering that she's a witch with powers growing stronger by the day. So Louise Miller is unpopular. She, like Sarah, is average. She has an average family dynamic, two loving parents, and an annoying kid brother. They live in a pretty average suburban house, and she has one friend, and it's overlooked because even though she is beautiful, she's not like an 80s stunner. After a string of bad luck, Louise is walking home after getting a flat tire on her bike in a thunderstorm. She stops at a very ominous house to use the telephone, and there is where she meets fortune teller Madame Serena 
who after looking her up informs her that she's a witch who's going to start receiving powers on her 16th birthday. Louise totally freaked out, rushes off, but then when weird things do start happening when she turns 16, her and Madame Serena get much closer. And this is when she asks Madame Serena to help her become the most popular girl in school. Louise wants to be admired. She wants people to regard her. And most importantly to Louise, she wants the most popular guy in school, Brad, who she has a major crush on, by the way, to want her. Now let's back up for a second to talk about why we know that Louise did all of this to get Brad. Earlier in the movie, she cast a string of spells once realizing her power, one accidentally on her brother, one on her pedantic teacher, Mr. Weaver, for embarrassing her in class, one on the popular girl so that they would hate each other, and she was about to cast a love spell on Brad to make him fall for her, but she didn't have the courage to follow through with it. So when she gets popular, because he's popular, he naturally wants to be with the most popular girl in school now. And Louise gets everything she wants and, like Sarah, starts to question it. Because deep down, she really just wants Brad to like her sans the love spells, potions, and witchcraftery, if that's a word. At the end, it is implied that Brad does like Louise for her, and that's after at the school dance she drops the amulet and he still does this slow walk over to dance with her. And in my opinion, this isn't too far off. It's actually implied throughout the film that Brad is a pretty nice guy and that he quote unquote sees her even though she's invisible to many other people. So again, this was a wasted spell that almost cost her her friendship with Polly as given the way that Brad's character is written, And given their initial interactions before she even knew her power, had she just done the work internally on herself and developed a little self-confidence, she could have arrived at this point with Brad without all of the quote-unquote magic, and Madame Serena wouldn't have had to give up her mink coat to help her garner all that power. What are your thoughts? And if you know of any other movies that feature witches who cast love spells on men, please drop them in the comments. I was trying to think of some others, but I was drawing a blank. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. I always love reading your commentary. Signing off now, your friend Dom.